Right, to our first speaker, um, the Honourable Eugenie Sage uh, is presenting today in her role as Associate Minister for the Environment, where the circular economy is central to her portfolio. Uh, will you please put your hands together for the uh, Honourable Eugenie Sage? Thank you very much, Wallace, and thank you very much for the invitation to speak to you today. Um, and thank you for accommodating me and other commitments in Wellington. It's also saving uh, greenhouse emissions. But uh, you've got an amazing lineup of speakers today, so I wish you the very best um, for the conference. And what I want to talk about is the government's recently announced program of work to take action on our long neglected uh, waste issues and to actually help support that transition uh, to the circular economy. As you know, over the last decade, we've seen increasing volumes of waste going to landfill, and that trend's obviously going to continue unless there's concerted action um, to tackle that. Because here in Aotearoa, we generate more urban waste per capita than in most comparable overseas countries. And we know that waste uh, releases greenhouse gases when it decomposes in landfill, contributing to climate change. We know that when it escapes the waste stream, it creates havoc for our marine environment. So there's a growing agreement across Aotearoa that every piece of waste that goes to landfill is a missed opportunity. We can multiply the productivity of materials in the economy by taking a circular approach and keeping those materials circulating uh, indefinitely. So um, in the confidence supply agreement that the Green Party has with Labor, uh, there is a commitment to a significant reduction in waste to landfill. And I'm really pleased to be working with organisations like Wastemans and the Sustainable Business Network and the wider business community and councils and community organisations um, to help make that happen. And we know that there are businesses and many individuals across Aotearoa who are doing their best to reduce waste by using less, by composting, by recycling. But as government, we need to make it easier for everyone to do the right thing because we don't have the nationwide systems in place. We don't have our nationwide composting infrastructure, for example. We don't have sufficient incentives um, with the waste disposal levy. So it's in those areas um, that the government's looking or is acting because we actually need to get more people involved, uh, to get more people to understand the major benefits in terms of jobs and reducing the impact on the environment that a circular approach has. Um, so that's why uh, collectively the government is taken, the first action was the phase out of single use plastic bags, which is out for public consultation at the moment. And I recognise the leadership of people like Kitty Hunnifin, uh, Countdown Foodstuffs, the supermarket chains, which are moving uh, to phase out or have phased out, are phasing out single-use plastic bags. But we want to ensure that all industry has a level playing field and that uh, industry moves forward together. That's why government's committing to a mandatory phase out uh, using regulations under the Waste Minimisation Act. So consultation on that is open until the middle of the month, so middle of September, so I do encourage you um, to have your say. But recently I announced the four main parts of the initial work program to help reduce waste and support that transition to a circular economy. The first of those areas is expanding the waste disposal levy to more landfills and improving our data on waste looking at where we need investment most to help businesses minimise waste and to help them design systems and products which use those circular economy principles. The third area is implementing product stewardship schemes and the fourth is developing a strategy for a circular economy. So just going through each of those briefly uh, in turn. Currently the waste disposal levy which was put in place in 2008 only applies to about 11% of the more than 400 landfills in New Zealand and just 30% of the waste stream going into those landfills. We know that construction and uh, demolition waste, commercial and industrial waste, is a big chunk of the volume of waste to landfill, but a lot of that construction and demolition waste isn't even going to landfills that are subject um, to the levy. 
So want to expand the number of landfills that the levy applies to and we'll be consulting on that and also um, about proposals to uh, increase the levy. So that'll be a program of work through this year and next year with the changes in place by 2020. And one of the key barriers to a much more integrated waste minimisation strategy is the lack of information on what's actually going um, to waste, what's going to landfill. Uh, we know the tonnage, but we don't know the materials often. Uh, what proportion of plastics, aluminium, um, glass, uh, we, we just don't know what proportion is being recycled. So I want to see uh, landfill operators reporting on both the quantity and the composition of waste, getting more data to councils, uh, getting more data from the private sector, so we better understand how much is being reduced uh, in terms of waste, reused and recycled. We want a more strategic investment in infrastructure, so we can do more onshore processing of recyclable materials uh, and accelerate that transition to a circular economy. So the technical experts in the Ministry for the Environment are currently identifying the priority sectors where the benefits um, are likely to be the greatest from making that transition, including what the opportunities are for job creation, for reducing emissions, and where there are changes needed um, in the supply chain. One, the third area that I'm really excited about is much greater use of the product stewardship tool, particularly mandatory product stewardship in the Waste Minimisation Act. We fifth, we've got 15 product stewardship schemes in New Zealand, none of them are mandatory. So the priority there for mandatory schemes are vehicle tyres, e-waste, starting with lithium batteries, agrochemicals, refrigerants and other synthetic greenhouse gases to ensure that we better manage their disposal. So um, that is an area that's a lot of work's being done by the Ministry and working um, with industry and really want to make progress in that mandatory um, product stewardship scheme space because we have been lagging uh, behind the rest of the world. Work, as some of you will know, is already underway in terms of responding to China's National Sword Initiative. There's an export, expert task force in Ministry for the Environment working with uh, businesses, the recycling sector, to look at some of the short-term and longer-term options about how we manage um, recyclables, what we've got to do to make sure that we get um, separation at curbside uh, to make it easier for businesses, and what do we need to do to invest in more processing infrastructure um, onshore. So that's just a very brief and quick overview, uh, but I am committed to making a significant reduction in waste going to landfill. Encourage you for all of the work and mahi that you put in um, in your individual businesses, your individual uh, projects at, at home, uh, the work that you do with councils, uh, with government, and just encourage everyone uh, to continue this great mahi because you now have a government that is seriously committed to reducing waste to landfill and making that transition uh, to a circular economy because it delivers more jobs, it delivers um, a reduced footprint on nature, and it just makes so much more sense. No reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Round of applause for Eugenie Sage. <laughs>